Good morning. Welcome back into Wake Up America. I'm Rob Finnerty. President Biden and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy have reached a tentative deal on the debt ceiling. But now comes the hard part, getting the bill through the Rules Committee today in the House and then having it pass the House and the Senate by Monday. For more on how this process could play out, let's welcome in senior Newsmax political analyst and former Pennsylvania Senator Rick Santorum. Uh, Senator, good to see you this morning. How are you? Yeah, great, Rob. Good morning. Um, interesting. This it's in the rules, uh, the rules committee today, three o'clock this afternoon. Um, there are a lot of people that are on the rules committee that are a no vote on the bill. Ralph Norman's on the committee. He's a no. So is Chip Roy. Thomas Massey on the fence, um, although he indicated that he could be a yes vote. How do you think this plays out today? Because theoretically, they could keep this in the rules committee just despite Kevin McCarthy and Joe Biden, couldn't they? Uh, unlikely. I mean, the uh, Rules Committee is, is a stacked committee. They're, they have a super majority. Uh, the, the Speaker controls most of the votes on that committee. Uh, he did give, uh, you mentioned three people there that uh, the Freedom Caucus wanted on the Rules Committee. That was part of the deal that he made to, uh, to get the speakership in the first place. But that's not enough votes to, uh, to, to stop, the, uh, uh, stop the bill from coming out of committee. And, and plus, you have Joe Biden has to do some work here. Uh, Joe Biden agreed, and, and there will be Democrats uh, that uh, that should be supporting this bill. It won't pass unless a large group of Democrats, hopefully a majority of Democrats, uh, that Biden can get to uh, to support this. And, and there should be some Democratic votes on the Rules Committee for this. This is a bipartisan deal. Yeah, this is how it's supposed to work in Washington, yeah. bipartisanship. It's ironic to me that it's going to be the Democrats that push this thing across the finish line for Kevin McCarthy in the end, at least in the House, possibly in the Senate. Um, to me, and you've been there, so you know better than I do, but this is one of those good enough bills. It seems like the Republicans are betting on taking the White House in January 2025 so they can confront the IRS thing at that point. Um, I know they are pulling back, clawing back $10 billion dollars of that $80 billion in this bill. But just a couple of reports. So here's the, uh, here's the positive first. Um, Republicans, this is from Yahoo News, Republicans secure massive gas pipeline approval in the debt ceiling bill. Um, this is a 300-mile uh, natural gas pipeline in West Virginia. So that's a good thing. One of the negatives the New York Post points out is the debt ceiling and um, coming up short on how to rein in the IRS. Basically, the bill doesn't go far enough there. How do you see it? I look at it this way. Uh, Kevin McCarthy got more out of this uh, debt ceiling you know, fight than any previous speaker uh, on the Republican side. Uh, the reality is uh, this was well played from the beginning. Uh, they came out. They were able to pass a bill. They had messaging that was solid. They, they, they asked for specific things. And they asked for things that were very popular, work requirements. But don't underestimate the power of work requirements. You're talking to the guy who helped author the 1996 welfare reform bill that instituted work requirements. And the Obama administration, the Obama and Biden administration have weakened those work requirements over time. This reinstitutes and, in fact, expands work requirements, which is going to save money. But much more importantly, it's going to save lives. It's going to get people back to work and, and, and appreciate the value of earned success and uh, really changed the dynamic in the workplace. So uh, there's so many good things that he got. Now, look, they didn't get everything, but you don't go into negotiation and say, I have to have everything. You have to compromise. And he did. And I think this is a very good step. And you know, I was a member of the House. I would be voting for this. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Um, and then in the Senate, you know, Lindsey Graham, he came out pretty strongly against this bill. He tweeted yesterday, I will use all the powers available to me in the Senate to have amendment votes to undo this catastrophe for defense. He's talking about defense spending. He wants to raise the debt limit for the next three months to give the House and Senate a chance to correct this, what he calls a defense disaster. So let's say it makes its way through the House Pretty tight in the Senate. How does it play out there? I think that Kevin McCarthy should say to Joe Biden, uh, I'm going to deliver a majority of Republicans for this bill. You need to deliver a majority of Democrats for this bill. And, and Mitch McConnell and, and Chuck Schumer should say is they should be required to do the same thing. Uh, this is if you're if Washington is going to work, it's going to take bipartisan support. And, and I say this all the time. You know, look at Lindsey Graham. Look, I agree with Lindsey. We need more defense spending. But you're not going to fix defense spending on a debt limit bill. Uh, this, this, he wants to fix it. And this didn't hurt defense spending. It just didn't do anything to improve it, which is necessary. But it's not a reason to oppose this bill. Go fight your battles and, and, and get a better appropriation for defense spending in this year's budget. So yeah. this is, a, this is a, again, a pure compromise. And if Washington is going to work, we need more pure compromises. 
Big win for Kevin McCarthy if he gets this thing to the president's desk by Monday, by the way, too. Uh, remains to be seen, but we'll watch it closely in the Rules Committee today. Senator, great having you back on. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. All right. Former